grant us encounters by his word lift your voice in one minute thank you jesus for your word speak to us someone is praying although it's following by way of television by way of the internet participate in the prayer the lord is giving us visitations that last someone is praying let it be from the depth of your heart Grant us revelation by your spirit that it set our hearts on fire indeed. For in Jesus' name I pray. Please be seated. God bless you again. Pastor Ben, sir, thank you. It's an honor. Thank you. I celebrate you and your dear wife. And we thank the Lord for this great miracle over the family. In the name of Jesus. Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 31 i'm teaching on the mercy of god the mercy of god it says for the lord thy god is a merciful god he will not forsake thee neither destroy thee nor forget the covenant of thy fathers which he swear unto them i'll read it one more time for the lord thy god is a merciful god he will not forsake thee neither destroy thee nor forget the covenant of thy fathers which he swear unto them You are the one that we praise. You are the one we adore. You give the healing and grace that our hearts always hunger for. Oh, our hearts always hunger. Wonderful, merciful. Savior, precious Redeemer and friend, who would have thought that a lamb could rescue the souls of men? Oh, you rescue the souls of men. For you are the one that we praise. You are the one we adore. You give the healing and grace that our hearts always hunger for. Oh, our hearts always hunger. I took out time last year to study extensively the subject of the mercy of God because I discovered that even though it is a topic and a subject that is widely talked about across the body of Christ, in truth, not many people have taken the time to doctrinally study the concept of mercy. And because we have not taken the time to study it, um, not many people have been able to truly receive the blessings and the benefit that comes from this deep and powerful spiritual concept. I've heard preachers preach on the mercy of God. The, the average believer just has an idea that the mercy of God, whatever it is, is an advantage. And that is enough for reception. Lord, whatever that mercy is, we know it helps. And so I receive it. And there cannot be proper reception in ignorance. Hallelujah. And so I took out time to study extensively 
the whole idea of the mercy of God. And I have, by the privilege of God's grace, I have taught on the mercy of God for many years. But I was surprised myself when I began to study the subject of mercy. I was, I was exposed to the, the level of ignorance and how much I did not know about the mercy of God. So I'm hoping that God would grant grace that um, within the time we'll have you'll be a compression of many thoughts but i'm praying that god will grant us grace because someone's life truly is about to change liberty is connected to knowledge and you shall know the truth and the truth that you know not the one available the one you know sustains capacity to make you free you shall know the truth there is a relationship between knowledge and liberty hallelujah praise the lord in my study on the subject of mercy i discovered that there are four layers there are four layers that um, you must understand four layers of thoughts that if you do not understand it makes um, appreciating and receiving the mercy of God very difficult number one the first thing you have to understand in order to appreciate the subject of mercy is the nature and the character of God this is the first thing you have to understand it is impossible to truly understand the mercy of God if you do not understand the nature and the character of God there is something about God that you must know to understand mercy. Number two, the second thing you need to know, the second layer of our approach to this subject would be the nature and the character of man. You have to know something about the intrinsic frame of man to necessitate mercy. If there are there are certain things if you do not know about man you will wonder why god is so insistent on ensuring that man becomes a recipient of his mercy there is something about the nature and the character of god we need to learn number two there is something about the nature and the character of man number three the third thing we have to understand is the spiritual system for administering mercy. As powerful as mercy is, it is not administered randomly. There, there is a spiritual protocol. That means there are people as cheap and as free as mercy is. There are people who will never be able to be recipients of mercy. Are we learning already? A quick recap. Number one, the nature and the character of God. You have that down? Number two, the nature and the character of man. Number three, the spiritual system for administering mercy. And then finally, we now look at the blessings and the benefits of mercy. If you approach your subject of mercy from this angle, I guarantee you that you will understand the mercy of God in a way that you may have never seen grant us understanding in the name of Jesus the nature of God the Bible tells us a number of things about God remember principally the way we know God is through scripture I've done teachings along that line there are four ways the Bible allows believers to know God in learning and knowing God um, there are only four platforms given in scripture number one itself is scripture the first way we learn God is through scripture the second way we know God is through his names the different dimensions of God are captured in his names so as you study the names of God they expose you to the multifaceted dimensions of God are we together the third way that we know God is by studying the man Jesus 
the bible calls him according to hebrews chapter 1 and verse 3 the express image of the invisible god so that invisible god who was full of mystery and mysticism the prophets gave us glimpses of this deity jesus came among the many reasons why jesus came to the earth it was not only to die jesus came as a manuscript he came as a correction to our perception about god because until he appeared nobody could know god accurately the prophets only had types and shadows they could only they could only um um give us as far as their knowledge could give jesus came as perfect theology and explanation of god so that anything we were in confusion about as to the nature of god we would verify using the person of jesus so if the bible says god is love we have a right to doubt that statement until we verify it in jesus is that true when the bible says god is all powerful we have a right to say it's a lie until we verify it so jesus came as a verification system so anything the bible says god is that you did not see in jesus it was an error in the person who received it and then of course the last way we know god is through experience job said i have heard of you with the ears but now my eyes see it thee but that's not where i'm going to I'm, I'm just showing you that um, scripture reveals certain things about God that we must know. The first information about God that the Bible tells us in unmistakable expressions is that God is love. Everyone please say after me, God is love. First John chapter 4 please and verse 8. Apostle John is teaching us something about the nature of God god is love do we have that down the bible says he that loveth not knoweth not god for god is love the bible does not say god have has love the bible does not just say god shows love but god is love psalms 145 please from verse 8 and 9 please write that down psalms 145 from verse 8 and 9 Here's what it says. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. Is that in your Bible? It says he is slow to anger and of great mercy. This is a powerful information about God. Verse 9. The Lord is good to how many? Now, you please pay attention to all of this information because we will need them in understanding how mercy works number one remember that god is love now the bible is telling us that the lord is gracious he is compassionate he is slow to anger that's a good information slow to anger and then he says he is of great mercy verse 9 he says the lord is good to all and his tender mercies are over this is a powerful information that means everyone and everything is a potential recipient of god's mercy if your life is void of god's mercy it is not his inability to get that mercy to you it is something about your not understanding how mercy is administered because the bible says his tender mercies are over all his works are we still together In Exodus chapter 34, Exodus chapter 34, let's read for time's sake from verse 5 and 6. Exodus 34, 5 and 6. The Bible says, And the Lord descended in a cloud, this was his encounter with Moses, and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. What was the proclamation? The Bible says, and the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed, the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth. This was God proclaiming his name. And among the many names, he said, I am merciful. It's not just what I do, it's who I am. 
a name is a means of identification is that true so if i call you your name i'm identifying you but also a name can also uh, a name can be um a, a revelation about the things that you do for instance if i say doctor so 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 and so most likely that may be a medical personnel so already from your name i can know that you're a medical personnel and god is saying among the many things i want you to remember is that i am merciful i am gracious so three things immediately about god that we find from scripture number one god is love Number two, he is gracious and compassionate. He's slow to anger and he's of great mercy. And that his mercy is over all his works. There are no biases. This is powerful. There are certain blessings in the Bible that scripture is not. Um, scripture would tell us clearly that he gave unto some. Have you read that in your Bible? For instance, the administration of the ministerial gifts, the fivefold as we call it, the Bible clearly says he gave on to some. When it has to do with spiritual gifts, Apostle Paul was teaching the church in Corinth and he himself said, do all speak with tongues, do all prophesy. But here the Bible is telling us that when it has to do with mercy, not just men, his entire creation would have to leave on the mercy of God that his mercy is over all his works now let's very quickly examine the nature and the character of man I'm just trying to rush because the main subject of mercy is what I want us to look at but these foundational thoughts are very important now we know and have been reminded again that God is love number two he is gracious he is compassionate he is slow to anger he is of great mercy and that his mercy is over all his works the nature of man some of you are already laughing there are very interesting things that the bible tells us about man that we need to know or be reminded of man there meaning all of us including the one teaching are we together yes there there is an intrinsic weakness and limitation that is enshrined in all men by reason of the fallen nature and if you do not understand that limitation you will not know why mercy is necessary are we together let me give you an instance if i ask you to sit down where you are seated now and i don't give you a reason or a revelation for it you see you will not have the staying power to comply with that instruction you will be weary and wonder why i am putting you in this kind of condition but if i tell you sit down here i have sent someone or there's some kind of fight outside and this place is your only place of safety no matter how tired you are that revelation will add strength and you'll be able to sit and remain there is that true hmm. the nature of man psalms 51 is a very disturbing psalm disturbing because um the psalm is there was pouring out his heart when you read the entire psalm 61 it's actually a psalm of deep acknowledgement and repentance the psalmist was not singing a song here the psalmist was not doing poetry here it was a cry that was coming from the depth of the spirit of a man who was aware of his inadequacies intrinsically i wish we had the time to run through it but for sake of time we'll do verse one and stop to five are you ready have mercy upon me O god according to thy loving kindness according to the multitude of thy tender mercies blot out my transgressions wash me thoroughly from my iniquity take note of that word and cleanse me from my sin please go back to verse 2 do you see immediately that there is a difference between iniquity and sin he says wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin let me tell you very quickly what they are related but they are not the same 
iniquity is a perpetual willful continual state of rebellion it's called iniquity perpetual continual willful state of rebellion sin in one word is disobedience people give all kinds of expression missing the mark transgression in one word sin is disobedience are we together yeah so if you are to interpret this in light of what i just told you it is safe and fair and even scriptural to interpret it this way wash me thoroughly from my rebellion and cleanse me from my disobedience next verse for i acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me verse 4 mm. against thee thee only have i sinned and done this evil in thy sight that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest let's read verse 5 together please this is a sad news but it is true ready one to read behold i was shapen in iniquity and in sin this is a very powerful information about man the psalmist in in his state of repentance researched why this weakness that though he was royalty he was a great man but he kept finding out that in spite of his love for god there were limitations and encumbrances around his life it brought him to his knees and in his research he discovered that it was not just about what he was doing there was something intrinsic in his nature and here was his discovery i was shaping in iniquity and in sin did my mother in sin did my mother conceive me the nature of man the second thing we need to understand is in jeremiah chapter 17 from verse 9 are we still following in this place jeremiah 17 and verse 9 people of god let's read together if you see it projected ready one to read the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it it's a very serious question that the heart of any man is so deceptive it can deceive the owner too you are part of the you are part of the entities that your heart can deceive your heart can deceive others and it can go to the extent of deceiving you who can know it verse 10 i the lord i search the heart and i try the reins even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings that a man can be deceived by his own heart a man can be deceived by his own heart is someone learning now genesis chapter 6 please this is god's assessment of the falling man we've had prophets we've had broken people speak but now let's hear what god has to say about man we're reading the first five verses it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them reading to verse 5 that the sons of god saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they took them wives of all which they chose verse 3 and the lord said my spirit shall not always strive with man for that he also is flesh yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years verse 4 there were giants in the earth in those days and also after that when the sons of god came in unto the daughters of men that they bear children to them the same became mighty men which were of old men of renown let's read verse 5 together one to read and god saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth don't forget who is speaking here and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was what 
only evil. How long? Look at what God is saying about man. This is a research God did himself. And God is looking at man. And it's almost an expression of regret. What kind of an entity is this? That the imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. The nature of God and now the nature of man. You see what God is saying here? That as wonderful as we look, respectfully speaking, as beautifully dressed as we are, God is saying, don't mind yourself because there is something there that is a lie. Number one, there is a deceiver resident within you and you can become the, a victim of that deceiver yourself. And that regardless how sincere, how well-intentioned, how truthful we hope and seek to be, it says the imaginations of the thoughts in our hearts are continually evil. Hmm. How else will you understand the subject of mercy if you do not study the nature of God and the nature of man? Now already you can see two contrasting realities. God who is love God who is sinless, gracious, compassionate. The Bible says he is rich in love, rich in mercy. Contrasted to the man who is the zenith of his creation in his fallen state. Look at the, the, the various things that the Bible has to say about man. Number one, that it talks about the fact that in iniquity that means man's condition has nothing to do with his awareness and orientation that the problem starts right from conception that destruction and that disaster is not just resident within the heart or the brain or the will is gone spiritual it is within the blood of man so when you when you celebrate a little baby and everybody celebrates the innocence of that baby. God's verdict is that there has been a transference of something into that baby that even the parents may not know. Every armed robber was once a baby. Every killer was once a baby. Did he come out of his mother's womb with a knife? Yes, the knife was in his heart. He only looked for it physically later on. The Bible says in iniquity, that means the tendency for rebellion was already in me. It was not outsourced. It was already in me. The circumstances that gave it visibility only were platforms for expression. So, a little baby who looks at the mother as innocent as that baby is, he winds his tiny hand and slaps the mother and the mother cries and the baby laughs question who touched that baby that there is joy you can derive in the pain of another question two a baby is crying for milk and then he takes the milk and never says thank you just pushes everything because he's tired who taught the baby in gratitude the baby wakes up in the night and cries regardless he is not sympathetic to any condition I know we love children. I love them too. But we are examining something here that God is saying. <laughs> no armed robber becomes an armed robber. No failure becomes a failure. No wicked man becomes a failure. They only manifest something that is intrinsic within them. That it is only the mercy of God. The power of God. If the power of God does not administer something to that condition. He's saying any man who has not encountered the mercy of God. Don't trust that person. You would have seen David as a young obedient shepherd boy. You would never imagine that such a well cultured obedient young man. There was a murderer in that, in that kind and quiet young man. Are we together? Yeah. I wish I had the time. 
I would have shown you a story between three people in scripture. One was Ben-Hadad, the king of Syria for Bible students. The other is Hazael. Hazael was like a, 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 an aide who worked for him. And then prophet Elisha. The Bible says that Ben-Hadad was sick. Is that true? Unto death. And he sent Hazael to go and inquire from Elisha. Will I die or will I live? Hazael now goes to Elisha and says, my boss has sent me to inquire of you. And he said, let me tell you the truth. He is going to die, but I don't have the courage to tell him. So you go and tell him, oh king, you will leave. But the truth is God has shown me that he will die. Scene two, the prophet puts down his head and begins to weep profusely. And Hazael is looking at him and saying, why my Lord? Why are you crying? And the prophet looks at Hazael and says i have seen the evil you will bring upon people he said you are going to reap pregnant women open and bring out their children and he said am i a dog it's in your bible hasayel was saying no 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 no. I, I can't I, I don't have that kind of courage and the prophet said no i have seen it god has shown me you will be king and when you become king all this piety you are showing now and truly that was what happened the only way God helped his people was to kill Hazael so that he died. The heart of man. Most of the people who, has, who have brought pain to people today were some of the nicest, supposedly innocent people. Have you seen house helps who kill their bosses, poison people? And as at the time they came, they themselves did not know that tendency was in them. Don't forget what we are discussing. Mercy, remember? So the best of us, outside of the administration of God's mercy, is a disaster who time will reveal eventually. This is God's verdict. It's not an insult. It is the truth. So that little boy called David now as a king the bible says at the time when men will go for war he was meandering across his balcony and then he saw is it in your bible he saw a beautiful woman and those days kings were like demigods no negotiation no nothing he said go and carry that woman and bring her whose wife is she they said the wife is this and that and that is a beautiful now when he found out she was pregnant he called the man to come back home and he said oh king what kind of order are you giving like this there's war going on there's no time for pleasure and eventually he signed his own dead warrant death warrant and oh dear look let me tell you by the time god is done with us eh you will not know when you've sat on the floor by yourself and just roll and say, Lord, before my, before this intrinsic disaster is revealed, help me, oh God. You will now know that mercy is not just for sinners. Mercy is for all men. There is a reason why I'm teaching you this because there is a theology that has been sold that every time you cry for mercy, you are either a sinner, maybe a fornicator, a drunkard. So we stand in self-righteousness believing I've been saved. I don't need the mercy of God. The Bible says it is because of that very mercy that we are not consumed. Are we learning? So, in conclusion, the nature of God is that His love, He is kind, He is great, contrasted to man. Man is evil intrinsically. And that He is so evil that His heart and His state can even deceive Him. That means you can actually believe you are all right and okay for many years. And you see, the way the evil in man works huh, is that until occasion allows it to be revealed, it will lie there quietly. So for 30 years, there is a tendency in you that will never be revealed. People can say you are so humble. Question, the person you are saying he is so humble has never been rich, has never gone abroad, has never been given an opportunity to be wicked. You can't say you are obedient until you have an opportunity to disobey. That's why there were two trees in Eden. The will is useless. Choices are useless until there are options. Is that true? So there are many people who you are saying they are nice. 
is simply because options have not been given listen we need to learn this is the reason why many families keep having pain over their children they wonder oh my child is nice under what condition and then respectfully speaking i'm not to get too emotional here i want to teach you the truth so that when it's time for mercy we'll say lord let it come and let it stay let your mercy not visit me let it find a resting place in my life the best of us is still inadequate we are various shades of disasters on our way to happen i assure you by god no matter how well intentioned no matter how sincere this has nothing to do with generating willpower to live right it is a weakness that the bible says it is in us in iniquity he said did my mother conceive me what then is mercy let's hurry up thank you jesus what then is mercy now that we understand the nature of god now that we understand the flaw that is in the nature of man what then is the mercy of god please write this down any action that is taken any action that is taken which is motivated by compassion is called mercy any action at all that you take whose motivation is compassion is called mercy any action this is the basic idea of mercy mercy stems from compassion that means it is impossible to have receive and administer mercy until compassion foreruns it the foundation of mercy is compassion are we together now if there is no compassion there cannot be mercy this is very powerful the foundation i wrote here or the basis for mercy is compassion what is compassion sympathy what is compassion pity what is compassion concern for the sufferings or misfortunes of others i'll take it again i'm defining compassion sympathy pity concern for the sufferings or the misfortunes of others you can never experience mercy until you have compassion i define compassion as the ability to be touched with the feelings of people's infirmity does that sound like a scripture in the bible that you've heard of for we do not have a high priest he says who has not been touched with the feelings of our infirmity compassion is the feeling mercy is the fruit that is generated from that feeling so when you are touched with the awareness of people's misfortunes and sufferings and inadequacies your response in honor to that compassion is called mercy mercy therefore is the fruit of compassion mercy is the fruit of compassion are we still together now let me define mercy there are three definitions i want to give us generally speaking and then i'll break it into two dimensions and we'll pray is god helping someone already tonight number one what is mercy compassionate treatment of those in distress this is the first definition the compassionate treatment of those in distress is called mercy compassionate treatment of those in distress number two the second definition of mercy means to show care and to provide relief to show care and to provide relief Branda 
Are you ready for the third definition? The third definition is to refrain from harming or from punishing an offender. The third definition of mercy is to refrain from harming or punishing an offender. Three definitions. Number one, compassionate treatment of those in distress. Number two, showing care and providing relief. Number three, refraining from harming, from harming or punishing an offender. Hallelujah. By these definitions, we come to two conclusions about the biblical nature of mercy. Number one, that mercy has two expressions or two dimensions. The first dimension has to do with forgiveness or withholding punishment. Please write it down. I'm, I'm being very simple and methodical because I want us to understand before we pray. The first dimension of mercy has to do with forgiveness and withholding punishment. This is where sinners come. This is where forgiveness from sin and so on and so forth. Forgiveness and withholding punishment. The second dimension of mercy has to do with alleviating pain. Alleviating pain. And providing relief from suffering. Alleviating pain. And providing relief from suffering. Hallelujah. Alleviating pain. And providing relief from suffering. Now. Please look up. So I have shown you from scripture. That when it has to do with mercy. From a biblical standpoint. There are two angles to it. Number one, it has to do with what? Forgiveness and withholding punishment. This has to do with defaulters. This has to do with sinners. The next angle has to do with alleviating pain and providing relief. It has to do with those who are inadequate. You can see that mercy is important for those who are defaulters and sinners. And mercy is also important for those who are inadequate and incapacitated at any level. This brings all of us into the equation as far as receiving mercy is concerned. Because you will always be one of these two. Either a defaulter or a sinner in need of pardon or one who is inadequate by reason of wearing a mortal body. In any case, you will still need mercy. If God is speaking to us, please say amen. amen. So the foundation and the basis for mercy is compassion. And I said that mercy is the fruit of compassion. Now, very quickly, let's go to the third level. How does God administer mercy? I think this is the most important uh, discussion here how does god administer mercy because you see most people just believe that because god is loving and man is a sinner and man is inadequate when i just say god show me mercy automatically mercy happens that's not true there are laws that govern the administration of mercy i wrote something down here that i want you to please write down before we begin to discuss the administration of mercy are you ready please write it down mercy is god's system of advantage mercy is god's system of advantage that guarantees that we become full expressions of his expectations regardless our humanity i'll take it again that mercy 
is God's system of advantage that guarantees or ensures that we become full expressions of his expectations regardless our humanity that means mercy is a system of advantage that god built to ensure that regardless how weak and frail we are that we still become full expressions of his expectation hmm. that means regardless the limitation that comes by reason of my humanity, by reason of my exhaustion, by reason of my inadequacy, it is still possible that I will rise to, to, to my full prophetic potential. No wonder he has helped some of us to be where we are because we understand that we are products of his mercy. Every time you see a human being producing certain levels of extraordinary uncommon results, look beyond the skill look beyond human connections there is an amplifier because based on if we were to be assessed based on the true states of our limitation we will not add up to what we are now the mercy of god is a system of advantage someone shout hallelujah, hallelujah. Hmm. this is what god designed to make sure that no matter how frail i am no matter how frail you are that there is a provision in his economy where regardless our frailty we still are able to rise to become all that he's designed us to be no wonder peter was able to still be that apostle even though peter ran away say mercy no wonder thomas you know most people talk a lot about thomas they call him doubting thomas go and study bible history and see the exploits that happened in the life of thomas Thomas was an exceptional, uncommon apostle. Yes, once upon a time, he was a doubter. But the latter end of his life was nothing short of a sign and a wonder. Is someone learning? Now, what does it take to receive God's mercy? Now that we know the nature of God, now that we have briefly looked at the nature of man and the reality of man's state that necessitates mercy and now we have the basic concept of mercy that on one hand mercy has to do with pardoning defaulters and sinners and then on the other hand mercy has to do with a provision of support for those who are inadequate i've studied my bible and i found out that there is a condition God must find in a man. Otherwise, mercy cannot reach you. This is the high point of this teaching. And I want you to please listen. No matter how in need of mercy you are, mercy will never come to you until God finds this one condition. And that condition is found in Psalm 51 verse 17 our psalm again 51 17 thank you jesus the sacrifices of god is it in your bible are a broken spirit it says a broken and a contrite heart oh god thou wilt not despise the one condition god must find in man and with man to be able to reach down to you with his mercy is brokenness please write it down just because the mercy of god is supernatural just because god is rich in mercy does not mean that you will be a recipient of that mercy he must find brokenness what is brokenness brokenness is a realization please write it down brokenness is a realization and brokenness is an admittance a realization and an acknowledgement of your limitations and your inadequacies outside of the assistance and the help of god brokenness is a realization 
brokenness is also an acknowledgement of your limitations and your inadequacies outside of the help of God. You are broken to the degree to which you, number one, realize, and number two, acknowledge that if God does not help me by myself and by my strength, I am inadequate. Please look up, believers. We have preached the subject of mercy in church, and many people have even come out to be candidates of mercy. Unfortunately, very few have received mercy. I know it by assessing the results in their lives. Do you know why? Because although most people want the fruits and the blessings of mercy, most people have compromised through pride. They have not come to a state of brokenness. I can tell you one thing with God. As loving and as wonderful as God is, the moment you come to God full of yourself, believing he's only an addition to what you already have, forget about mercy. It is not Bible mercy you will get. The Bible says the sacrifices of God are a broken and a contrite spirit. This was what I discovered in my study of the subject of mercy that broke me down. It broke me down in a way you cannot imagine. Psalm 34 and verse 18. Psalm 34 and verse 18. Psalm 34 and verse 18. Let's read together. It's projected. Ready? Please read. One to read. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken spirit. A broken heart and save it such as be of a did the bible say he saves all no no there is a kind of man that god is looking for to be a recipient of his mercy tonight if you truly want to receive the mercy of god just crying and rolling will not bring mercy you must assume this posture in the spirit that when the mercy of God comes upon individuals and families and businesses and ministries, it is not just searching for sound, it is searching for this spiritual state. Read your Bible in the New Testament. Every time people cried unto God for mercy, for instance, blind Bartimaeus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said what do I do for you that I may receive my sight and he prayed for him brokenness many people have not gotten to this point in their lives where they realize and acknowledge the fact that they are inadequate do you know why because you see please look up there is a state of the fallen man for some reason, man as a species is very, very stubborn. It takes a lot of defeat, recycled again and again, to bring us to our knees. For instance, the nation of Israel. God himself called them a stiff-necked people. Do you know what that means? One who is not malleable. Proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5 to 7. He says, trust in the Lord with all your hearts. And then he says, lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him as what? That's the question. Acknowledge him as what? It is the reason why people of God, you would see God reach down to individuals in their lowly estate and begin to lift them with his hand and his jealousy and put them in positions that looks unfair do you know why because what he was looking for he finally found in them whereas there can be other people who are even already privileged by default but that self-pride there are preachers today who have the they may have the backing of God, but they have, they, there is clearly no mercy in their lives. When one plus one equals two in your life, the mercy of God is not at work in your life. Because that is exactly what arithmetic says should be. But when one plus one 
becomes an answer that only God writes. The mercy of God has added to that result. I've had the honor and the privilege of meeting very successful people. Successful in business. Successful in ministry. Successful career-wise. And as God grants me the privilege to sit with them and talk with them, usually I want to ask, tell me your story. And there are certain points lines in those stories I'm looking for. I connect the beginning of their lives and I want to know at what point mercy came in. Some of those who were recipients of that mercy did not even know when mercy came in. They only know when brokenness came. They will tell you, I got to a point where I lost, I failed, and I cried all through the night. Aha! Uh -huh. From that time, they will say, I found a message. From that time, they will say, I went for a meeting. They did not know that from that time, it was mercy that took them. Please listen very careful. You can know when you are on a flight of mercy, the result will be clear. I wish I had the time I would have shown you from Luke 15, from verse 11, the story of the prodigal son. Theologically speaking, this is the greatest expression from uh, the standpoint of parables, the greatest expression of God's mercy. You know why? Because it's a very comprehensive parable. It shows a family from the beginning, the original plan. Then it shows the rebellion of a young man and it shows the consequences so it starts with a father that had two sons. Follow the story carefully. And it says that the father was a blessed and benevolent man. And provided the sons were under his care. They were comfortable. There was no mention of lack and limitation. The Bible says one day. I'm rushing because of time. One day the younger son met his father. And said father I am tired of dependence on you. You see the problem now? I, I have come to a point where I think I am smart and I am adult enough. I do not need your influence in my life. I am tired of giving you the glory behind the results that happened to me. It's, it's, it's a thing of embarrassment before my friends. Give me something, my portion of the inheritance and let me leave. And the father said, are you sure? He said, yes. He said, go. From the time he came out of the influence of his father, lack began notice the gradual degradation that happened to that child the bible says he went and met his friends and he began to spend the money on riotous living then the bible says in verse 14 that in the course of time he spent everything is it in your bible and he began to be in want i like the word began meaning it was not his prior experience he began to be in want and he kept going down and down and down until he got to a point where he was feeding with pigs please follow this in your imagination once royalty having access to everything because of one foolish decision that was a communication of rebellion and pride father I do not want your influence in my life i discovered that i am i think i'm an adult enough you see in the realm of the spirit you measure spiritual maturity by your degree of dependence in the physical realm the more matured an adult you are we know you are an adult by your detaching from authorities around your life reverse is the case in the realm of the spirit that the more dependent you are the more matured you are because you have now realized that outside of the help and the mercy of God, I cannot amount to much. This young boy would be learning a very painful and powerful lesson. Here's what the Bible says, that he got to a point where he came to himself. Please look for that scripture for us. It is within the power of man to come to himself. The Bible never said the Holy Ghost spoke to him. The Bible never said a demon threatened him. Do you know, let me tell you this. Please look up. You may not believe me, but hear this. There is a dimension of pain that is a gift. 
Let me repeat it again. There is a dimension of pain that is a gift. Pain can be an advisor. Pain can be a counselor. So, there are times that when you see people going through certain levels of pain, you will want to help them. But you see, God will prohibit you. Because God will say, I've been working with this man for two years. I'm, I'm now at the moment where their strength has failed. Allow this pain to culture them into brokenness and repentance. Don't try to help people God is not helping. You may be destroying his program. Is someone learning? Very powerful lesson. It had to take pain to bring this boy to his senses. He came to himself. The pride that came with the availability of resources did not allow him to have a, 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 a time of counseling to think, what am I doing with my life? But now, pain had brought him to that point. Let's listen to his contemplations. He came to himself and said, How many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough to spare and I perish with hunger? Here's what he said. Next verse. I will arise. Hallelujah. Something has happened to that gentleman. I'm praying for you. May this happen for you. Because there are many of you who have in reality taken God out of your life you replaced him with over dependence on intellect over dependence on business ideas over dependence on human connections I'm not saying those things are wrong but my Bible already says trust in the Lord with all your heart that is the reason why you see some people when you are clapping for them they roll on the floor because they know that there is a part of this equation you cannot see I will arise and I will go to my father and I will say unto him listen carefully hear the voice of brokenness father I have sinned against heaven and before thee is someone following and I am no more worthy to be called your son this is not condemnation this is revelation his true state had now been revealed to him he says make me as one of your hired servants and he arose and he came to his father look at the miracle the bible says the gentleman said i will arise and i will go to my father he would have remained there and say it's just a blind thought he would have died there i assure you that hunger was already about to kill him he said i would die with hunger but the bible says indeed he arose notice this the moment he arose and started moving the father too left home and started coming he said draw nigh to me and i will i will not come and meet you in your rot and your situation there you cannot help yourself but acknowledge the fact that you are limited the moment you satisfy the condition of brokenness you are ready for mercy listen do you know why i'm teaching you this many of us here are leaders you must also find this in the people you show mercy to. Forgiveness is useless until there is brokenness and repentance. Anybody who is in need of mercy, the role that he has to play in receiving that mercy is to be broken first, to realize and to acknowledge. When you help people who are not broken, you endorse their pride. When you help people who are not broken, you accelerate their journey to perdition and destruction. Are we together? It is the reason why when we make altar calls, sometimes we ask people to come out. We, it's not to embarrass them. Leaving your seat and defying the shame, leaving your colleagues and your loved ones and coming to stand there is a token, is an expression of your brokenness. Are we together? Unfortunately, these days, there are people who come and stand here and still are not saved. When you look at them, you don't see brokenness. They are even still standing and recording the preacher. All they want is just a, a photo of his, of his picture. While a powerful prayer of salvation is going on. Lord Jesus and the person is just recording. But the only thing he says in that prayer is amen. You are not saved, sir. 
No, sir. Except scripture will be broken. The Bible says if you will confess with your heart, are we Bible students? The Lord Jesus and believe, confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that he was raised from the dead. He says, then you are saved. Brokenness. Now, let's see what happened. The Bible says he arose and he came to his father. But when he was a great way off, his father saw him and had you see our formula again what was the first thing the father had i told you mercy is the fruit of compassion you cannot have and show mercy until it, there is first compassion pity this young man is limited he is frail and the bible says he ran and fell on his neck and kissed him 21 very interesting verse and the son truly said what he said he would say if the son did not say this, if verse 21 was not in that scripture, we will know he's a hypocrite. He said he was going to say it. And when he met his father, he truly said it. Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight. I am no more worthy to be called your son. Next verse. But the father said to his servants, look at the father. This describes the character of God. The moment the father found brokenness, there was no discussion of the issue again. It was over. This is the, I, I want to show you how mercy works now. There is no point discussing the issue. What I am looking for, I have found. Ah, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Do you know why I'm saying this? Because you see, men will not forget your past. Men will not forget your yesterday. Even when you have become Paul, they will keep reminding you of when you were Saul. Jesus died, I agree, but how long did he die? He only died for three days. When he was now resurrected, they were still talking about the dead Jesus. Like many people will still be talking about your 10 years ago. They will say, Rahab, the great grandmother of Jesus, is it the Rahab I used to know? But the prodigal son's father showed us the character of God. The moment he finds brokenness, the end of discussion to that limitation. No more discussion. He would have said, what a stupid boy you are. So this is what you have become. You could not even leave anything. At least the man with one talent even brought back the talent. What? You didn't bring back anything. And then they will beg him and beg him and later he say, alright, mm -mm, that's not God. Remember, the Lord is gracious and compassionate. That's why I started by showing you the nature of God. Listen, if you do not understand the nature of god you cannot express that character of god to those who are under you because you see the end of this discussion i'll leave that for tomorrow the moment you receive mercy you must one day be in the position of this father too every one of us in this story will be both the father and the son are, are you getting my discussion some of you for now you are like the son you need to come back. But for some of you, as leaders, you are that father. There are people who are long overdue for mercy. They have been broken. That case has to be over. Hmm. No shadow you will light up. Mountain you will climb up. Coming after me. No wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Listen, the Bible tells us there were two thieves on the cross. Is that in your Bible? Jesus was in the middle of two thieves. I wish I had time. I would have taught you that the cross is where both good and bad people meet. <laughs> you will think because you are Jesus, the cross will not be there. The cross and the prison are two mysterious places because no matter who you are, you must pass through the prison or the cross. It is not, you don't have a choice to exempt it. You only have a choice to choose whether it's the cross or the prison. These are two mysterious places in life and destiny. They forerun every throne. The prison foreruns the throne and the cross foreruns the throne. 
Joseph, you must pass through the prison to sit as prime minister. Jesus, not even you, will be spared of the cross. Can I tell you this? This is not my message, but I just thought to digress for one minute because some of you are right now, you are in states where you do not even know, Lord, how come the righteous and the unrighteous are in the same condition? Remember the prison and remember the cross. Jesus was hanging on that cross and there were two thieves by his side. And one was open and he began to shout at Jesus in his pride even while on the cross. These were thieves so they both stole and the other one was shouting at Jesus you can't even save us. And then the other one demonstrated brokenness. He said Mr. Man this is an innocent man in between us. Paraphrasing. We are victims of our wrongs and Jesus looked at him even on the cross. He did not ignore brokenness. He says today you will be with me. It is a both of you. Today, because there is brokenness, you will be with me in paradise. Hallelujah. When I learned the mercy of God perpetually, this is not self-condemnation, but let me tell you the truth. Every time I go to God in prayer, I go to him and I say, Father, there are so many people who depend on this grace and you know, if I am left to myself, I cannot even help myself, talk less helping other people. I ask that by your mercy and by your grace, you will help this man who is so limited and inadequate. That is the kind of prayer God wants to hear. And he will come to you and pick you on the wings of eagles. And your life will command results and dimensions of possibilities that will dumbfound you and everybody around you. But when they add you up, you don't equal that answer. Because the mercy of God is the mystery behind your results. Please listen to me. This is a very powerful message. The mercy of God. I have seen the mercy of God in my life. I have seen the mercy of God in ministry. When people come and ask me what is the secret, I can only tell them the best that I know. But then leave them with the fact that everything I told you is not the whole answer. There is a part of this answer I don't have the power to give. I will have to direct you like an usher to the one who can show men mercy. I have seen families where the man and the woman are well cultured disciplined parents and all four children became hooligans all four of them have you seen that happen respectfully speaking lawless children you can't say the children were not trained they fasted with the parents they did night vigils and the children still became what they became and yet i have seen children where the child can leave home for two weeks and return back the third week. The mother can see the child five times in a year and the child is in that city. And one day, the child will be moving somewhere and enter into one conference and the power of God will hit that child. The next time the child returns, he's a well-cultured, stable young man on fire and the mother and the parents have no hand in the transformation of that child. Someone shout mercy. I have seen diligent people trusting God to raise money and build and doing their best and the moment they are building they have a problem with maybe some government and they can come and demolish that building. And I've seen people who in their innocence someone would just say I like you and I want to help you. Look let me tell you this you never downplay the power of God's mercy. Hallelujah. Even in my own life, sincerely and respectfully speaking, I will tell you, there are times, maybe because of my schedules, and sometimes I'm not able to see people and minister to them as I would want to. And then in the midst of all that crowd, you see people who fly in all over the world, and they are standing, doing their best. And I can turn somewhere, and you can see a little boy and the mother somewhere. Someone just held them and said, I can help you see apostle. 
and they are standing there and I'm saying my God look at the mercy of God the ability to pardon an offender and the ability to add up for the inadequacies of the other everyone seated here and you who is following from television or across the globe we are all in need of God's mercy there are people during this pandemic and all through it was their wealthiest moment they were sitting quietly and fortune just came and met them like an arm robber and changed their lives completely there are others who for decades they had a track record of diligence and in one year they were brought down to nothing someone again shout mercy, mercy. your mind is fighting what you are saying and say remember your skill is there shout mercy again mercy. let your mind and your spirit know that beyond skill and beyond human connection Ah, except the Lord builds a house is it not in your Bible that they labor in vain that build it except the Lord watches over the city I will never forget a time true story years ago a woman came to me PhD she was applying for a security work at a um, I, I mean it jet PhD from a university never been employed i said what is this applying for security security i, I, I think it was an oil and gas firm sincerely i stand before god i'm telling you this phd ah may your mercy not leave me oh god may your mercy not leave me may your mercy not leave me the world is too wicked without the mercy of god and for those of you who think oh, this this does not concern me everything is all right let me tell you this the pandemic should have taught you a lesson i have cried with many people i have have you even politicians have you not seen people who were minding their business and the mercy of god just came and lifted them i remember somebody who almost plunged to depression when he, he lost election the last uh, time he invested money, borrowed money, lost election, and he came and met me. He said, the issue is not that I didn't win. The issue is that I pushed too much. Now I'm in trouble. And he was a very good man. Hmm. Nebuchadnezzar was one king who learned a lesson through his pain. If you have the time and you go home, Please read Daniel chapter 4 from verse 34 to 37. This was the repentant prayer of Nebuchadnezzar. He became an animal for seven years. He praised and honored the God who lived forever, acknowledging that there was a government above him. We are going to pray. Do not miss tomorrow's session. I will share with you one or two more information but for now i want to wrap up by teaching you two blessings among the many there are two major blessings that come to your life when the mercy of god has rested upon you number one is the blessing of healing number two the blessing of provision write it down please matthew chapter 14 from verse 14 to 21 matthew 14 from verse 14 the bible says and jesus went and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion towards them what was the response to that compassion i told you that everything that comes as a response to compassion is called what mercy so healing the sick is the ministry of mercy is someone listening now healing the sick more than the ministry of power is the ministry of mercy 15 we're reading to 21 very quickly and when it was evening his disciples came to him saying this is a desert place 
and the bible says and the time is now past send the multitudes away that they may go into the villages and buy themselves victuals but jesus said they need not depart give them give ye them to eat remember compassion is still speaking and they say unto him we have here five loaves and two fishes he said bring them hither to me 19 and he commanded the multitudes to sit down on the grass and he took five loaves and two fishes and looking up to heaven he blessed and break and gave the disciples and the disciples to the multitudes uh-huh the bible says and they did eat and they were say mercy when you eat and you are filled two things that are important here you must eat and you must be you can eat and yet you are not filled but this one when mercy is what is responsible for your provision you will eat and you will be filled and the bible says they took off fragments you see human beings again as soon as they were filled what did they do with the rest they threw it away the same people who were hungry jesus fed them and they threw the fragments and the disciples had to gather the fragments and it was my shame and poured your love you look beyond me oh. you look beyond me oh. ah. i'm the one you have shown mercy you have shown mercy you have shown mercy let it not be that when you are built houses when your sheep your cattle everything is working well you will say my power the might of my hand has given me this he said but thou shall remember it means you can forget some of you have forgotten the god that took you from nothing to where you are today is someone thanking that god the god that saved you diseases and sicknesses that would have killed you he said if the lord was not by our side now may israel say someone pray someone pray one minute lord i open up my heart first to say thank you and then to cry that you keep me broken take away pride from me everything that has made me full of myself to believe that it is just by my power i repent oh god subconsciously I may have taken your place before men when they clapped for me I did not tell them Jesus was the reason behind it someone cry before your maker your grace your grace I'm nothing without you your grace your grace shines on me are you crying before the God of heaven your grace your grace I'm nothing without you your grace, your grace shines on me. There are many of you, the reason why prophecy has not happened in your life is not because the man of God who spoke lied. The posture of brokenness that must give way for the mercy of God to come. You have been delaying the manifestation of prophecy because there is no brokenness. A broken and a contrite spirit thou will not despise someone is crying to God please forget about who is by your left and right if you are too big to cry for 
the grace to be broken, then I tell you, forget about the mercy of God. Mm. Mm. He said, if my people who are called by my name, the first thing is they shall humble themselves. They are my people, but they will never see my outstretched hand until they humble themselves and pray and seek my face turning from their wicked ways it says then will i hear from heaven and i will forgive their sins and heal their land please swallow your pride tonight please swallow your pride tonight i respect your pedigree but like the 20 and 4 elders remove your golden crown and cry before the maker Please pray one more minute. Thank you, oh my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving your Spirit till your work on earth is done. Cheap victories that you would have received. But because the mercy of God kept coming to your house, kept coming to your business, the mercy of God kept coming to your ministry, kept coming to your job, but it kept returning because it did not find brokenness. Don't let it return again. It came 2015. Pride and arrogance did not allow the mercy of God rest upon you. 2016, 2017, 2018. 2019 2020 2021 here is your chance again win that war of destiny once and for all lord if you don't help my children i don't have the power to help them lord if you don't help my business i don't have the power to help if you don't help me from this addiction i don't have the power to save myself if you don't help me from this financial situation the bills that are on me will destroy me. Thou son of David, here at this conference, have mercy upon me. Have mercy upon my children. Have mercy upon the works of my hands. A broken and a contrite spirit, O God, thou wilt not despise. hallelujah listen we're wrapping up i'm going to pray over your request now true story i know a woman who was diagnosed with cancer and they had done everything they knew to do she was afraid of chemotherapy because i think she had read all kinds of things online that it does not guarantee survival and i stand before the god of heaven and i'm telling you this story this woman went out of her way. At a point, she said, according to her, she was listening to one of my teachings and she decided to spend, a, to have a personal vigil with God. Not asking for anything. Just rolling and crying and say, Lord, I'm not afraid of dying, but please, if I am going to die, please arise for my children. This is all I am asking. And the Bible, I mean, the woman, <laughs> I said the Bible, she cried and cried and slept. And that when she lay down and slept, she just saw that a man entered the room, true story, reached his hand into her and brought out something. Ladies and gentlemen, when that woman got up, that was how that thing started shrinking and disappeared from her body. The race is not to the swift. The battle is not to the strong. <clears throat> I will have mercy upon whom I will have mercy on. Some of you, let me tell you the truth. Right now, the situation you have found yourself, it is the mercy of God that you need. Some of you are doing well by yourself. 
your major problem is your children. Some of you are not even doing well sincerely. It will take the grace of God. Now, please hear me. I told you that healing and provision, it also extends to signs and wonders. They are, they are manifestations of God's mercy. I have a covenant with God. I have read the scripture. I have a covenant of answered prayers with God. I will tell you this by the God of heaven. Please, if you are yet to submit your prayer request, is there anyone? I, okay. Go ahead. Please, ushers. Because the next, the next five or so minutes will be a sense. Now you know what mercy is. In case you wrote it down and unbelief made you to remove some things. Let me assure you, let your faith rise. Because God is about to surprise you. We are in the zone of mercy, so let there be no fear. The one who is merciful is also the all-powerful. I'm saying it again. If it means you writing something again, writing for your children. A group of very wealthy real estate people came and they demanded to see me. And I said, what, what is this for? And they came and met me and they said, Apostle, we had a discussion and we came to the conclusion that we're going to have a covenant with God over you that anywhere on earth we build our estate we must build a house for you there this was some years ago it's not something that is recent I said what is the meaning of this what did I do they said this is our agreement with God wanted to look for something that represents a kingdom there anywhere Ladies and gentlemen, I, I, I apologize if it sounds like pride or whatever. I cannot tell you how many estates these people have built today across Nigeria and Africa. And every, I've not gone to one of the houses to even check and say, this is my key. They just bring the papers and say, go and drop them. Go and drop them. Except the Lord builds a house. Don't you think I don't know what I'm saying? Hallelujah. A group of business people came and met me and said, Apostle, we agreed that we're going to make you a non-executive board member. I said, what does that mean? Very big, we're not talking of small little companies. What is my own contribution? And they jokingly said, you represent the presence of God and the ark of God in that business. Okay, so what am I going to be doing? Praying for you? I can pray. I don't need to be any. I can just pray. He said, no, this is our conclusion. And the only thing I can say after that is to God be the glory. Can I tell you, everything you are looking for is also looking for you. For hear me, it takes the mercy of God. The mercy of God. I was living in a particular nation. This was like three, four years ago. I, I was done and there were some American people who came. Uh, they were doing a partnership, a real estate partnership with the... The, that country and the pastor and the group of business people they just stood I was hurrying up to go and rest and prepare get to the airport and return back to the country and they met us and they said well we are developing properties here and we just want you to know that we have put five properties for you here I said five who are you people what are you doing till today I have not gone there to say this is how my house is A woman who relocated not too long ago to the UK from Ghana just called me and they bring me papers and keys and the photo of a house. It will be like the, maybe the Ikoi or Leki now in Ghana. Magnificent structure. And said, the Lord said, I should give it to you. I'm leaving. I've not gone there. It was my protocol that when I was in Ghana, I said, you should just go and see it. I just know that God bless you is there. Whatever happens to it. Just leave it there first. Have you read the scripture that says, when the Lord turn again, the captivity. I'm sorry if, I hope you, you are not misunderstanding what I just told you. Can I tell you, when the mercy of God rests upon your life, you will lay up gold as dust. Believe me when I tell you this. That what somebody is praying for, God will carry it and bring it to you and knock your door. And you will open it and you will see it like a parcel there. 
I'm saying that because something is about to rest. Be patient. The next two minutes here. Please, I know that you've been praying. You've prepared for this meeting. Please don't waste your moment. Don't be like the man who the king leaned on and said, even if God will open the windows of heaven, must this happen? And he saw it, but did not eat of it. Please, in one minute, where's the prayer request? Have you dropped it? We are going to pray. In one minute, I'd like you to pray from the depth of your heart. Father, these that I've written here, arise in your mercy and let this be the last time I will write it as my prayer request. Please. Please make sure you are praying. Make sure you are praying. Take your eyes away from the limitations. Look unto the God of mercy who can visit men and turn their lives around. Someone is praying. Foundations of Sapphire, are you praying? King's Court, are you praying? You are praying this for your family. Bring your family in this prayer. Bring your children in this prayer. Your business, your ministry. I worship you, I worship you, you are here, mending broken hearts, I worship you, I worship you, way maker, miracle walk, promise keep, light in the darkness, that is who you are. We call you the way maker, miracle walker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. That is who you are. You are the covenant keeping God. You are the covenant. Yahweh, Yahweh, the covenant keeping God. Yahweh, the covenant keeping God. In the name of Jesus, the ah, I sense such an anointing in this place. Do you know what I'm seeing in the spirit? I want you to write it down. I'm just seeing doors opening. Honestly, I stand by the God of heaven. Very strange doors opening. This is what I'm seeing. Some of you, you didn't even expect it. Some of you, it's this week that is coming. We're not talking of something that is in the distance. Doors opening.
Hear me? I wept for no man was worthy to open the book and unlock the scroll. And an elder tapped me and he said, weep not for the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of Jesse is worthy. It says, and I looked upon the throne and I saw a lamb as though it had been slain, having seven eyes and seven horns. Father, I bow my knees to you, O God of my covenant, and I declare, I speak to you, these Egyptians you see today, you will see them no more forever. You will see them no more forever. Hear me. Every blessing comes from God through men to men. From God through men to men. There are times that God says yes. But the human vessel who should partner with God for your testimony is not ready. Let me call them by prophecy. Anybody, whether in Lagos, in Nigeria, or across the globe, who has been anointed and mandated to partner with prophecy and has not responded to the voice of the Spirit, right now we compel them to partner with God. Hear me. Every door that has been closed over your destiny for a long time. Because I'm, I'm, I'm seeing doors. I'm still telling you. I'm, I'm seeing. Listen, do you know what a door is? A door is a device that midwives two rooms or two rams. Doors are the provisions that connect seasons. Midwifing one season to the other is a door. And if that door is closed, a season cannot come to an end for another one to open. Let me pray again. Anybody who is standing at the door and that door that opens you to the next season has refused to open by the power of the Holy Spirit. We open that door now. 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 Hear me? He said, go to the place where the roads divide. You will see a cold there that no man has ridden upon. He said, lose it. And if they ask you, Harakatus, yeah. I'm, I'm seeing like, I'm seeing like fire just coming on like seven people. Just help them. I just saw that anointing right now. Right now. Just help them. You don't have to bring them out. But help them. Someone uh, is, is like a chain. That is breaking up someone's life right now. The Bible says he has broken the gates of brass. And cut the bands of iron in thunder. I stretch my hands right now. In the name of Jesus. Those chains will be broken. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Everything that has tied you. And held you bound. Help that woman please. Be broken now. Help that woman please. Help them please. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. Everything that was stolen. Hear me. He said, when they ask you, why are you losing a cold? That no one has written on. It means there are virgin opportunities. That no one has touched. God kept. Listen. Even the owner of the cult. Has not written it. That means there are people holding certain things. It is not for them. They are caretakers. But at the command of the king. He said release it. And if they question you. Say it is a, a, a triumphant entry. You cannot have a triumphant entry. Walking barefoot. Therefore, I speak over your life. Anyone who has been made a caretaker 
over any blessing that should come to you in the name of Jesus may they release it for you now There is a woman here, your right leg. You've had severe pains. Just, I'm feeling the pain right now as I'm standing. Just the right side. Who is that woman? The Lord wants to set you free now. I don't intend to take so much time, but I mean, I, I, when I came in here, I sense an investment of prayer and preparation. I know that people have prayed and prepared. Believe in miracles, so. My dear, look at me. You love Jesus. What's your name? I want to pray for you. Don't feel embarrassed. Eh? There is something that God is taking out of your life right now. I stretch my hands and I curse every spirit. Huh? I'm seeing limitation. In the name of Jesus, be free right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. What's your name? My dear, this lady shaking her head. that for tomorrow who is Gladys what's your name Gladys. Gladys. where are you from Hi, I have to pray for you I'm not a prophet of doom eh? but I'm looking at you and I'm seeing your hands and feet tied in the spirit this is what I'm seeing you are a sincere lady, but there is no progress, no moving forward. People will promise to help you, and by the next day, they don't. Let me prophesy to someone. If there is any embargo on your life that makes people desiring to help you, uh, help this woman, help that, oh my God, please help her. In the name of Jesus, help them please. By the power that raised Christ from the dead, right now, I use Abakos Shekatea, be free now. Be free now. Everything that has tied you, that will not let you go forward, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, go forward now. Go forward now. I pray for all of you who are having pains. In the name of Jesus. There are two people here. You saw me in your dream. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Just listen to what I'm saying first. You saw me in your dream. And in that dream, I was ministering to you. This is, this is something God wants to release you from. I'm going to pray for you right now. Please don't come out at random. Make sure that there's order in the house of God. Let's not come out at random. You don't have to come out. You can stand where you are. I presume that so many of you, because you've listened to the teachings, you, where, wherever you are, but I'm going to pray for you. Someone will shout right now, loud under the anointing. Aha, that's right. Something is happening here. Something, help them. Something is happening here. I'm seeing like angelic ministrations. H help them, please. Angel help them, please. Whether you are an usher or not, help them. I'm seeing angelic ministrations. These are they not ministering spirits sent to minister to they that be the heirs of salvation? In the name of Jesus, we release the ministry of angels. We, we release the ministry of angels to families, to homes, to businesses. Help this woman. We release the ministry of angels right now by the power that raised Christ from the dead. Let there be healing right now. Every part of your limbs, let there be healing right now. I decree and declare if there is anything that is connected to witchcraft, help this lady. 
I remove that demonic thing from your body now. For the Bible says every tree that has not been planted by my father, I declare let it be uprooted now. Please hear me. Do you know that many attacks on your health is actually an attack on your finances? It's not really the health. It is the supplies. Be healed in Jesus name. Be healed in Jesus name. Thank you. Please you can return to your seat. Just one last prayer and I'm done. Please someone can come and help me pack this request. I want to pray over people here. Because the Lord is opening my eyes. I'm not a prophet of doom. But I'm seeing a casket like a coffin. And the Lord is saying I should rebuke the spirit of death. Do you know let me tell you. There is a spirit that has been released across this nation. You have to pray. You see people just dying anyhow. People don't die anyhow. Oh, uh -uh. oh death where is your sting? And no grave where is your victory? The devil wants to just come and waste the lives of people. Just like that. I want to pray for you and this extends for you and also your loved ones right now anyone here who is a victim or there is an operation of the spirit of death around your life my god i'm, I'm just sensing like fire leaving my hands lord i don't know where they are help them please in the name of jesus i declare by the spirit of life and even by the mercy of god be delivered from death now whether by accident by the sword by sicknesses be delivered from death now and if there is any stranger roaming around your body in the name of a sickness or a terminal disease whether cancer whether hepatitis whether blood condition please in one minute rebuke it in one minute rebuke it i declare my liberty by the mercy of god in the name of jesus now i speak over your life that in the name of jesus beginning from now a dimension of God's mercy you have not seen may it begin to work for you mercy in your finances mercy in your spiritual life in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ tomorrow morning we're going to take the time I want to share with you something from scripture and then I'll have the time